Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karva and this is the last video in the series of how you can score maximum in your graduation and post-graduation exams. In the past three videos in the same series, I have discussed many important things that you must write in your answer which will help you to gain maximum marks in your university exams. Also, if you want to get a sample copy of my notes which made me a topper in my graduation and post-graduation, you can WhatsApp me on the number displayed above and we'll be happy to share some sample copies of my notes. Now, in the previous few videos, I have discussed that a good introduction is half the battle won. If you write a very good introduction, it will help you to elongate your answer, will help you to fill pages, Plus, it is also going to give a very good impression to the examiner. In the introduction, you need to include four paragraphs. First would be talking about introduction to the age in which the particular work was written. Second would be introduction to the writer. Third would be introduction to the work. And fourth would be talking about literary movement, which basically belongs to this work. Okay, so uh, if you include all these things, it is going to take about two pages and it is going to give you a very beautiful introduction. Now, apart from introduction, there are few other things which you can put in your answer irrespective of the question asked. So you can talk about some intertextual references. You can also throw light on other works written by the same writer. For example, in the question, if uh, the work uh, you've been asked is paradise lost you can even talk about other works written by Milton then you can also talk about quotations. so you need to include at least five to seven quotations in your answer and you need to also highlight these quotations so that the examiner can see these quotations and finally you can give a perfect ending to your answer by uh, including a paragraph on the critical comments where you talk about critical comments given by different writers on this particular work. So by including all these things, you not only enhance the quality of your answer, but also you give an impression to the examiner that you know way beyond the boundaries of syllabus. So after you have prepared separate paragraphs or points on all these topics, you need to also prepare certain important topics. Most of the time, the questions that they ask in a 20 marker uh, bracket are from these topics. So we are going to discuss all these points one by one in detail in this video lecture. The first important thing that you must make a short note on is character sketch. Most of the time in a 20 marker question, you will find that teachers ask you to give a character sketch of the main character. Now, what all things should we include in a character sketch? In a character sketch, you need to first make a list of all the major character traits of that character. For example, you need to talk about all the positive characteristics and all the negative characteristics. Make a list of these characteristics and then after making the list, Put one one instance in each of these lists which justify that particular trait in the character. For example, if you have a question of uh, 20 mark asking you to write a character sketch of Huckleberry Finn from the novel Adventures of Huckleberry, you need to first talk about character. And while you're talking about characteristic like adventurous and you're saying that Huckleberry Finn was a very adventurous child you need to justify it by telling an instance from the novel which shows that he embraced the character sketch of adventure okay so this is how you're going to uh, elaborate your answer by giving instances from the text as well as highlighting all the important traits of the character also make sure that you include a lot of important quotations either said by the character or said for the character because these important quotations are going to tell the examiner that you have actually read the text even if you've not read the text you can just google the important quotations get a list and put that in your answer so by Using this particular method, you can actually write a six to seven page long answer on a character sketch. 
The next important thing that you must not forget to read before you sit for your university exam is major themes in the particular work. For example, if we take Pride and Prejudice and if you get a question on highlight the major themes in Pride and Prejudice as a 20 marker question, then in that case you need to highlight all the important themes. What is a theme? Theme is basically the subject on which or around which the entire book revolves or what are the underlying hidden meanings that the book is trying to convey. Okay, so most of the books, most of the novels, plays and poems contain four to five major themes and a few motives. Motives are smaller themes which are present at only certain areas of the novel or the play or the poem. If we take the example of Pride and Prejudice, then one of the major theme in Pride and Prejudice is love. So you need to talk about the treatment of love and how the relationship between the couples are highlighted throughout the book. Also, the best way to talk about a theme is to share views of different characters on the same theme. So you can talk about love from the point of view of Elizabeth, from the point of view of Mr. Darcy, what they meant by love and how their definition of love differs from each other. Other themes include uh, reputation, the value of a Victorian woman, class struggle and you can also talk about these themes by giving examples of other works having the same theme. So in order to elongate your answer you can talk about uh, George Eliot's mill on the floors and show how the condition of Victorian females highlighted in that book is similar to the condition of Victorian female highlighted in Pride and Prejudice. Similarly, you can take up examples of class conflict from Hard Times and show how Hard Times also talks about class struggle. So when you are including all those things in your answer, you kind of uh, sharing your knowledge beyond the uh, you know boundary of the syllabus you are incorporating other texts from different eras from different writers and elaborating your answer by giving instances comparing and contrasting those things so the first important stuff that you must make notes on is character sketch the second most important topic is Themes. In themes, you are going to not only look at themes from the point of view of different characters, but would also compare works which contain the same themes. The next important topic to study is symbol. Now, in any play, poem or novel, you would have four to five important symbols. What are symbols? Symbols are object, places or instances which have a deeper meaning than the surface meaning. So uh, suppose if we take example of Lord of the Flies, in that particular novel you will find that the mention of Piggy's glasses occur again and again. Anything which occurs again and again and have a different meaning than what literally it implies becomes a symbol in a work. So Piggy's glasses stands for science, for scientific temperament. Similarly, the pig figure, okay, that is highlighted again and again itself is a symbol. So you always make sure that you make at least a short note on each of the symbols which is present in the work, okay. So a paragraph long note should be there on different symbols so that if a question comes on symbol you can just uh, you know uh, jot down the lines which you have written under different symbol headings another important thing that you must not forget to include in your notes is significance of title most of the time i have seen that the examiner are going to ask questions on title so significance of title ke upar please ek acha essay likhiye Okay, and significance of title is important from different point of views. A title can be symbolic in itself also. Sometimes if we look at novels like Pride and Prejudice or Lord of the Flies, the titles itself function as a symbol. They have a symbolic significance in the entire novel. Apart from that, a title basically highlights the theme of the novel. So when you're preparing a, uh, you know, a paragraph or some pointers on significance of title, you are actually taking in consideration the major themes. 
also when you're looking at the title make sure that you incorporate certain important references which will be neglected by other students so always you can find detailed essays on the titles available free on internet you can just read four or five essays and maybe in uh, those essays you might find one one point which is very different which is interpreted in a very unique manner you can just pick up those lines and use it in your answer you can paste it in the word document where you are making your notes and you can use those beautiful lines to enhance the beauty of your answer so if i summarize i would say that 12 major topics should be prepared by you for every unit if you are sitting for a graduation or post graduation answer the four important topics which you will include in the introduction of your answer are introduction to the author to the age to the text and introduction to the literary movement now apart from that you need to include four important topics which you can use in your answer irrespective of the question which has been asked these topics include the conclusion uh, includes intertextual references includes your uh, views on other works of the writer and quotations and finally we have four topics from which most of the time 20 marker questions are asked which include themes symbols character sketch and Finally, we have the significance of title. So these are the 12 important headings for which you should prepare yourself and you can prepare one one paragraph each on all of these headings. If uh, we are talking about character sketch, symbols and themes, you would need to have subheadings of different symbols, themes and character sketch. For example, if there are four major characters then you need to have one one paragraph for each of the four characters similarly four paragraphs on each of the four themes and four paragraphs on each of the four symbols so if you uh, compile all these points together you will find that easily within six to seven pages of computer uh, of an ms word document you can jot down all the important topics and you just need to learn them before you sit for the exam i would be glad to share my copy of notes with you guys on whatsapp so you can just whatsapp me on the number displayed above asking a copy of my notes and i would love to share it with you guys apart from that you can visit my website arpitakarva.com and check out the online course we are offering for ugc net aspirants also free of cost we have Put in the list of all the major writers which you must study for UGC Net English Literature. You can also subscribe to this channel if you really wish to get notified about the videos we post every week. We post GoNet quiz on all the social media platforms. So if you're really interested to participate in the exciting GoNet quiz, then you can definitely check out the links in the description below and follow us on all the different platforms. That's it for this video lecture. We'll meet soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next. Happy learning. Keep loving literature. Stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.